Hello students and welcome to the third and final lecture video for chapter 7. Now we left off last time talking about the fact that farmers were having a tough time because of falling prices and rising debt for the mechanized uh, machinery that they had bought for farming. So they began to organize to try to get change. One of the most famous farming organization was called the Grange. It was organized in 1867 by Oliver H. Kelly and their goal was to educate farmers and to regulate railroad rates. If you remember from the last video, the railroads were charging extremely high prices to ship uh, products, and this was hurting farmers and the poor working man. With the help of the Grange, the government passed laws, became known as Grange Laws, that set maximum rates for shipping and storage. They're called Grange Laws because the Grange is the one that got the government to pass these laws. And they also set up something called the Interstate Commerce Commission, or the ICC. The job of the Interstate Commerce Commission was to monitor big businesses, mostly the railroads, and make sure they didn't break the law or use unfair labor practices. Another group is called the Southern Farmers Alliance. It was a, they formed a cooperative to collectively sell their crops so that they could make more money. Uh, they excluded black farmers. They only accepted white farmers. Remember, this is during a time when the South is full of Jim Crow laws and a lot of racism. And these two organizations, the Grange and the Southern Farmers Alliance, came together and formed a political party. If you remember, a political party is a group of people that tries to get someone elected, like the Republicans or the, or, or the Democrats. The Grange and the Southern Farmers Alliance formed a political party known as the Populist Party in 1892. Now, the Populist Party had four main goals. Number one was free silver, and that the term free silver refers to coining silver as money as well as gold. They wanted the government to own the railroads so they couldn't charge too much to the poor farmers and workers. They wanted a graduated income tax, which means that if you make more money, you pay a more percentage of your income in taxes. During this time, a lot of the taxes were a flat tax rate, no matter who you were or how much money you made. And number four, they wanted bank regulations. They wanted the government to come in and regulate banks so they didn't charge too high of an interest rate for the poor farmers and workers to borrow money. Now, they did have some success. For example, three people from the Populist Party were elected governors during this time. Five were elected as senators, and ten were elected as congressmen or in the House of Representatives. One of the most famous populists during this time was a man named William Jennings Bryan. He was born in Salem, Illinois. He was a lawyer in Nebraska, and his nickname was the Boy Orator. An orator is someone that is very gifted in speaking. So he was known as the Boy Orator because he was very young and very gifted and talented in speaking to large groups of people. In 1896, he gave probably his most famous speech called the Cross of Gold speech. This speech was given in favor of coining silver money. Now, on Blackboard, one of your assignments is to actually listen to a portion of this speech and write an entry in your journal. You'll find that here on the Blackboard page. In the election of 1896, we had Bryan, the populist, running for the Democrats, and McKinley running for the Republicans. William McKinley won. Um, William Jennings Bryan tried a new campaign tactic for this time, which was to tour the nation and speak to people. Remember, that was considered unacceptable during this time. And McKinley campaigned in the traditional way of this time period. He accumulated money and had others go around the country and speak for him. He conducted what is called a front porch campaign. He would speak from his front porch to crowds that would come and gather to hear him speak. That's one reason why McKinley won, is because <clears throat> William Jennings Bryan's tactics were considered unacceptable by most people during this time. Now, by 1900, the populist movement, uh, the populist party, or populism, as it became to be known, sort of faded away, and those members of that party mostly joined the Democratic Party. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.